I have a simplified drawing of the variable frequency drive. I have removed the inverter section and replaced it with a lamp which represents our load across the DC bus. This unit is fed with a 208 volt AC supply. And the output or the resulting DC output from that AC supply is 292 volts DC. I have an oscilloscope connected to the three lines that feed the converter section. Let's have a look at the trace. And what you'll notice is we have three waveforms. Each one of those is 120 degrees apart. And if I freeze those waveforms at any given time, so I've frozen the supply, you'll notice that the black one is positive. It's above the zero plane and the blue and the red are negative. They're below the zero plane. And now I have the red one positive and the blue and black negative. So you'll notice that there's always one positive, two negative, or two negative, one positive. Okay, please keep that in mind. You'll need to understand that when I explain how the diodes rectify the current. Okay, on the output side, I have an oscilloscope connected across the lamp. And you can see a nice, beautiful red straight line. The DC level is the is the measurement from this zero line where my mouse is up to that red line. That's the level. Now, what I'm going to do to really explain this is I will connect the AC, or sorry, channel A to the AC input. And what you'll notice is that DC voltage level is just slightly below AC peak. So that DC level equals the AC RMS that's applied, in this case 208 volts, times the square root of 2. So it's 208 times 1.414, and then there's a slight drop for the diodes. Each one of these diodes takes about 0.7 volts or 1 volt to turn on, and it causes that DC level to be slightly less than the peak of the AC. Okay, so keep that in mind. Your DC level is at the peak of your AC RMS input waveform. So the resulting output is 292 volts, 291.9, we'll say, volts DC. There's a slight drop from that peak because of the operational voltage of each one of those diode switches. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll disconnect the capacitor. We'll have a look at this waveform now. And what you'll notice is we have ripple. Once we have ripple on the output, then this light should flash a little bit. Your voltage will drop. Your resulting DC now is just slightly less than 280. So capacitor health does affect the performance of the drive. I'll close that. I'm going to close the uh, oscilloscope. I'll connect the cap back up. Make sure we're back to normal. And you'll see it how it's a nice straight line. Our DC, that's what you want. You want that nice straight DC to be fed into the inverter section. Now, let me explain how the diodes work. This can be a little bit tricky depending on timing. Okay, now. See, or please look at the oscilloscope. The blue waveform and the red are above zero, so they are more positive with respect to the black. Okay, so keep that in mind. So line one and line three are positive, line two is negative. So I'll just slide that out of the way. So let's look at the diodes. So what we're going to do is we're gonna draw out the power flow through the load or what would be supplied to the inverter section. So, diode one is positive, so the anode is more positive with respect to the cathode, the downstream. So current will flow through this diode. Okay. On the blue one, the blue is positive, so current will flow through D3. 
and then that current will flow through the commutation choke through the load along the bus and there's only one way that that current can return to the supply and that is through diode 5. So it will it will conduct through diode 5 back to line 2. Okay so now I'll try to do another one. So I'll just play and see if I can get a different sequence. Oops, I have to, sorry guys, I have to uh, take away my tool here. Okay, now we have two negative and one positive. You can see this, the blue is below the zero line, the red is below, and the black is above. So now, which one is conducting? Let's have a look. I'm going to move this over to the right-hand side. That's the beautiful thing about this simulation. It's called multi-sim, National Instruments multi-sim. So now let's have a look. Black is positive. So line two, alternation is positive. So current will flow through this diode onto the bus. Now I have to move it again. <laughs> and it's going to go through the load it's going to come back and the blue one is negative and the red one is negative so current will flow through this diode back onto line three and it'll flow through this diode back on to line one it can never go from where it came from because the other diode is blocking okay so if I move this out of the way again if we look at it, black is positive, so this is on, current flows through the bus, through the lamp, comes back on three, and comes back on four, which is the red line. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Um, you just have to always remember that there are three diodes conducting at any given time, and that's how we have the, uh, the, the nice, small ripple on the on the output i'll show you that one more time let's disconnect this cap if i run it you'll notice there's it doesn't all drop all the way down to the zero line like it did with the single phase so it's a lot easier to filter out it only drops because they're overlapping it only drops a little bit so there you have it that's how we produce DC current from a three-phase supply. All right, we'll see you in the next video.